Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I managed to get onto Cool Zero's account and he has got everything. <laughs> He's literally got it all. He's basically saying to me, Hell Hades, do you want to borrow the account? I've just got Dark Kale. And I was like, yeah, sure. Logged in. I was like, damn, this account is stacked. So Cool Zero, thank you for lending me the account. He's already got uh, Romantu. He's got... Um, Val the Destroyer as well. So like he's got an absolute stack of champions on his account that he's worked hard to get. Honestly, Dark Kale is one of the champions that I really want on my main. But I don't have the, the drive to do both hard and normal Doom Tower each month. I just like I, plus doing the second account, I just I just don't have it in me to keep pushing both sides of Doom Tower. So it's my own bad. I should have him already, but I don't have him. So Dark Kale, honestly, I mean, I've rated him as one of the highest rated champions before playing with him on the website. So if you look here, if you go into any of my champion uh, tier list pages, uh, we rate them um, in each area of the game. We rate them for damage. We rate them for what they're going to bring in faction wars. Um, and you can see... Yeah, before playing with him, I've rated him very highly, like five stars, five stars, five stars, four and a halves. A um, couple of kind of areas that he, he slips down a bit on Doom Tower, depending on how you use him, honestly. Um, but yeah, mainly because he brings debuffs and or he doesn't bring the specific skill that you need for that type of encounter. But for me, you know, we've we've had the Dark Aethel, the Dark Hellhane, um, and the, uh, what's his face? Um, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> and Dark Kale is absolutely like smashing those guys out of the park in terms of skill sets. So let's go into what he's got going on and then we'll build him out for damage first and then we'll kind of show him off in a few areas. But yeah, let's have a look at his, his kit. So for me, they've really like punched a cool kit. I wish we could choose which Doom Tower champion we want next. I wish we could for each of the different things. And I know it just means that we would get the better ones quicker, but you know what? I don't want the other champions. So to invest all that time for Dark Kale, it's, it's not good. It's not good for my, uh, my health. So uh, what's he got in his A1? Attacks one enemy three times. Nice. Triple hitter means that Giant Slayer is a good potential mastery for this guy. Each hit, scale up with books to 35% chance to activate two poisons. Or one poison and one HP burn. Three hits. Each hit's got a chance to do this. That's actually kind of nuts. So you could do like a couple of poisons and a burn. I mean, you could end up just stacking up. If you've got a bunch of poisons out there and you've got a burn out there, this A1 could just chunk health off of bosses. It could just be an absolute chunk of damage. So I really like this A1. The A2 here, AoE ability. Three turn cooldown, I love it. 100% chance, if you book it, to place decrease attack. So very different from the normal Kale. But, I mean, an a AoE decrease attack by itself is good. And if I look at the damage rating, uh, it comes in as strong. So for an AoE hit, it's in like the top 50% of people that do damage. He's not going to be the best nuke in the game. But he does hit pretty hard. Uh, and we'll show that in a bit. Each crit also has a 100%, if you book it, chance of increasing the duration of all debuffs. So this decrease attack goes on a two-turn cooldown. So yeah, running on for two turns. If you're running like quicker than the Clan Bus, for example, you'll get the extra um, extension of a debuff. I really like this ability. I think it's cool. I'm wondering, I guess we'll get to see it in a minute. I'm wondering if he applies the decrease attack and then applies the increased turn. If he does, then it's just 100% decrease attack on all the time, which is very cool. But we'll see that in a minute. Uh, but anyway, it's a really nice addition to the A2 that he does a debuff extension. I really like it. And his A3 then, poison sensitivity, which is pretty rare for any champion in the game, especially stacked against poison. I think there might only be two other champions potentially that do this together, which I like. So again, 100% chance of placing three big fat poisons out there and poison sensitivity. I mean, he's just got debuffs really coming out of his ears. Um, so yeah, really like it. Three turn cooldown as well is very nice. So yeah, this is a, another cool ability. Um, 
And then if you're saying to yourself, right, wow, fair enough. We then get to his passive, and this passive is way better than you think it is. You're, you're saying to me, Hill Hades, the passive seems okay. Decreases crit rate of enemies that are under two or more poisons by 15%. I mean, what's 15% between friends? Let me tell you this. Most content that we face on PvE, the enemies have got 15% crit rate. Clan boss, 15% crit rate. Most bosses, 15% crit rate. So if you decrease it by 15%, guess what? You never get crit. It's crits generally are the reason that things like clan boss runs fail. Um, you know, there's like one of these spooky crits that comes out and just slays your healer or slays your decreased attack champion. Dark Kale gets rid of that. It makes him super cool for clan boss. And just generally good for boss encounters. So Dark Tail for me is just an, a sweet, sweet champion. I think they've done a great job on his kit. And as I said, I wish I could just fast forward the others. Go for uh, Dark Tail first. He's the one I would want to go for out of the Doom Tower normal side. So we're going to build him out first for damage. And then we're going to take him into some content in more like a, a leisurely build. I've locked off the uh, clan boss team. so going to see what else we can do but one thing i didn't really talk about actually was dark kale's base stats are strong they are really really strong and by the way um i know we've seen kale a bunch of times but he looks wise <laughs> he does look wise yeah so we're gonna put his speed in i'm gonna go 170 speed 100 crit rate uh here damage for the a2 we're gonna go into sets and just pick out savage and then let's get the optimizing going. Actually, a couple of seconds. So we've got a 5.5k attack with 267 crit damage. Using Savage and crit damage sets. Okay, that's nice. Um, and let's just see what that's going to pump out. So it's going to pump out an 80k hit from his A2, which is pretty juicy. So we're going to build him out into this gear. Let's try him out in Dragon and in the arena before we put him into more normal gear. So look, we need to say it, this is high level gear. 180 speed, 100% crit rate, 267 crit damage, 5.3k attack. This guy's built to nuke stuff down. Uh, he's not built to survive long. So you know, we're running Helm Smasher on him. We're running the normal offensive masteries on him. We just want to see what he can do um, when he's put in that position to blow stuff up. We know that KO actually does good damage already. Uh, what's this team here? This is an interesting, interesting little old team for Dragon. I like the look of that. Um, so let's go with decreased defense, normal sort of style, blow stuff up team. Just to, just as my normal benchmark. That's all this is. This isn't like, oh yeah, the realistic view of how you're going to run this team. This is just my benchmark is always the same. Therefore, it's always good to test it in the same way. Right, so I just have an auto. Increase attack gives us more damage. Drop defense and weaken on them. Poison them. Poison us. What's he doing, auto? He does his A2. That was like 170 to 200k damage. Pretty juicy damage. We're, on, uh, we're running level 20 here. Um, I mean, it's up there with a kind of ethos A2 or. You know, it's up there as a smack. It's a decent smack. We'll try it out in the arena. Is A1 triple hitting for 50k? Damn, that's nice damage, actually. Generally nice damage. Let's just see what happens with his A3. It looks like he went A2, A1. All right, he's been swiped down. Pick him up, fellas. Is he going to get another go? Should do. Drop defense and weaken again. Everyone's doing work. Let's just see. So his, his A3 is on cooldown. I missed it, actually. I missed it going out there. Let's just slow down again. It comes to a big nuke. Kind of cool uh, animation. 220 or K there. So he is, he is doing work. He's doing damage. Obviously, we've built him as a damage build, but that is a strong level of damage. Let's try him out in the arena as well. Okay, this is going to be actually a good comparison because we've got a Trunda built to nuke here. 
uh, with a, a kind of team built around Trunda, what we're going to do is we're just going to sub Trunda out and put Dark Hale in. See what Trunda's doing. Like a hundred followed by a 70k. And we know Trunda's as big as they get in terms of damage. I uh, won't go up against the Seekers. That would be an unfair comparison. Uh, this one would be pretty fair, I think. So sub her out. Replace it with Dark Kale. So we saw basically 200, 180k-ish worth of damage in total with both of her, her AoE hits combined. And that's, as we know, as hard a hit as we're going to see from like an average arena champion. So Dark Kale is popping out with a 120 to 150. Very much up there as a strong, strong neuter. That is big damage. 150 odd K. I mean, damn, that's up there. It's going to blow up most people that you come up against. So the A2 does work. Um, it's strong. It's a strong, strong ability. Obviously, we've got him built to do damage. This is exactly how you would build him for an arena setup, honestly, if that's what you were going to use him for. But comes out there and just slams people. 80 or K in this one with a, a Duchess in the mix. So, yeah, pretty good. Let's just see what his other abilities do if we get a chance. They might just be dead. They're dead. But, yeah, in terms of arena champ, yeah, look, he's going to be strong. Uh, offense or defense because he chooses the right ability on auto and he smacks. He just smacks stuff up. So, good arena champion. Um, Let's get him rebuilt now for some sort of more general content, a general build. So we're just changing up his build here. We're going to go with more defensive stats, accuracy to land his abilities. We're still going to try and keep some speed and we're going to try and keep some crit rate. And we're still going to build for damage, albeit now there's way less damage because we've also got some defensive stats, more speed, etc. So the build kind of changes up. Uh, what I will do here is just so that it doesn't become... A crazy gear fest. I'm just gonna lock out some of these champions which clearly are built to do crazy damage and we don't want to like mess the whole arena teams up to get this build done. So see that I just clicked on the little padlock, it locks everyone out. So yeah, so it brings us back a more kind of standard build, uh, a more realistic build, cruel gear, and a kind of couple of bits and bobs. Let's throw them into this and then um and I'll show you as well. This is the type of mastery build that I would use with him as a kind of more generalized build. So you know, whether it's clan boss, whether it's dungeons, I would do something more like this. So giant slayer in here. Um, use kind of typical clan boss setup with giant slayer involved. And then probably support tree, maybe trying to get master hex for a way so that you get more procs of your poison, more procs of that decrease attack. So you then you can extend it up further and get more work done with his A1. Um, so this is kind of more like a dungeon stroke. Doom Tower, Stroke, Clan Boss type setup that I would use. Okay, so it's still a strong build, but we've got a couple of sets of Cruel. Good attack. Now we've got some health to stay alive. We redirect the damage away from our tail in dungeons. Enough speed to do some work. Enough accuracy to land some stuff. Um, and I guess let's just throw him in. Let's throw him into some dungeons and see what he can do. So Ice Golem, I think it's going to be quality. Decrease attack, one of the biggest abilities you want. Poison. One of the, the main abilities that you need uh, to stop the retribution hits coming back at you. I'm going to run it on stage 20s just because stage 25s just take so damn long. But um, we we'll take away the kind of real crazies and, and get a more standard team going. Okay, so we're going to run speed, drop defense, um, control, control and support. And hopefully Kale is kind of being there for poisons, nuke and decrease attack. So lots of abilities in play. Get that decreased defense down now. Get the smack coming in. So without all of the craziness, still a 50k hit, which is strong. It's really strong. Obviously, that same hit applies the decreased attack, and it pushes up any debuffs that are on as well, like the decreased defense. So I, I can't fault his kit. I honestly cannot fault it. I feel like it's a really strong kit. And obviously gets the abilities away there. 20 odd K, it's not too bad. I'll get itself onto the boss and uh, let's see what work he does on the boss. I mean, just quickly, I've got to say, he's literally obliterating wave two. Like, he smacks it for tons of damage. And because we've got the debuffs out there with the team anyway, he is just pumping them up. And these guys are getting no work done at all. So, yeah, it feels like this is a really, I mean, it's just a really strong team generally together here. Uh, even if he gets to go, he's dead. And then, what's interesting here, so... 
basically when we get the poison spread, which uh, Tomb Lord will do in a second, he is going to give us... A, ah, <laughs> he's going to be able to um, increase that poison amount. One thing I just noticed there was something I was talking about earlier on. Does he apply the decrease attack and then extend it? He absolutely just did. See here, we've already got five ticks, four ticks. That's him extending it up uh, ahead of time. So flipping heck, he is blowing stuff up with that A1 as well. Damn, this, this guy is the real deal. Loving it. Absolutely loving his kit. Here it goes. Increase the debuffs, pal. He is not going to enjoy all these poisons popping in a minute. And Kale's A1 will pop some for him as well. Is he going to do it? Not sure what he just tried. I think he might have just done his A3 actually, even though there was nothing he could have done with his A3. So that's a little bit dumb. There goes his A1. See the damage? No retribution hit because he's popping poison. Poison doesn't re um, trigger that smack. Damn, it's actually really cool. Same again. A1. Nothing being triggered other than damage. We're loving that. Absolutely loving it. This Ice Golem does not know what the hell is going on. He's used to twatting people by, by now. It's not happening. Look at that damage on that A1. Popping the poisons as well as straight up crit damage as well as uh, Giant Slayer procs. All in all, that is a ton of work he is doing right there. A ton of work. And this decrease attack is never coming off now. Look at it. It's never going anywhere. And the poisons are just scaling up. Loving. Okay. I mean, it just feels like his kit is so strong. So damn strong. The only thing that I'm, I'm disliking so far is his A3 is a little bit dumb in that even the, when a debuff bar is full, he's doing it and it doesn't hit. So it's a, that's the only kind of bit which I would say not great. But anything else about it so far, loving it, honestly. Popping those poisons again. This, this uh, dude is dead as soon as he gets a turn. Take a rest. And Kale, let's just look at the damage numbers. Kale 1.8 million versus Tomb Lord 1.1. Bear in mind Tomb Lord is placing a ton of the poison as well. So, and Seal 845, we know Seal does work. Really, really strong. Uh, really strong. Loving that. Okay, let's try him, I guess, um, on... What am I doing? Let's try him against Dragon. I thought I'd just try and pull a fun team together for Dragon. Dragon 24. Kalvalax in there doing his work. Decrease defense and weaken here. Um, the burns, which will complement Dark Kale as well as the freeze to tr uh, try and deal with the waves. A bit more poison and damage here. And then Kale's nukes and what have you going on here. So... This could be quite a fun team um, if we can deal with the waves well enough. But we get the, the guaranteed poison straight away. Then obviously we get a bit of poison and burns going out everywhere. Calvalax nukes. Dark Kale nukes. Good amount of damage. Freeze comes out so that we've got a bit of control going on. And when they get turns, they should just be popping a ton of poison as well as the burns. And see that? Sit down. Don't have a go, my friend. Do not have a go. And they feel like they're, they're having a try, but instead, getting absolutely nuked. Uh, annoyingly, she just got unkillable on. Typical. Let's skip past this. There you go. 20 seconds of my life. A1 in. A1, A1, A1. Get rid of him. Right, okay, let's go. The wave two. Same old setup again. Smack. Smack. <laughs> it's nice, actually. It is nice. Nice little combo. Big old freeze. Then he starts to sit people down. Cavalax. The A3 is the only wonky thing for me for Dark Kale. Like, when there's a debuff bar that is full, it just keeps going for it, which just, it feels kind of dumb. Onto the boss then. The poison's just proc straight away. And then Dark Kale gets his A1 going, does he? Yeah. Oh no, that's his A2. Puts a decrease attack out there. Burns go on. That's nice. Just want to see. 
what the A1 does here. Ah, oh, it's actually just run through. Interested to see what sort of work the A1 does with the burn there as well. Now, so he's done his A3 again. Honestly, I mean, if you're running other poisons like a Calvalax or someone like that, you almost feel like turning his A3 off. Look at the damage though. Chunks of damage from procking the burn and the poisons at the same time, as well as Giant Slayer procs. Just really, I, I just feel like his kit is really well put together. The Ice Golem, Dragon, both going to be strong. Got a triple hit and a decrease attack for Finite, which also makes him very viable for Finite. Um, and for Spider, big AoE, as well as um, the ability to proc burns. So if you were looking at, you know, a general Spider team and you've got someone that does have, you know, an AoE HP burn ability, then he's able to activate at least the ability with his a1 which again so you know you've got secure in here someone like that is just going to proc those burns quicker which means you'll you'll do the damage quicker so he's not like the perfect um spider champion by any means but he certainly will help you in later stages of spider when you're trying to get an hp burn type of strat going but yeah in dungeons in terms of dungeons i think he's top notch arena we've already seen he's brilliant um I'm not going to show like a full clan boss run in this video. I guess comment below if you want to see a separate video, Dark Kale versus clan boss, because his build does complement clan boss a lot. Um, his, his whole kit complements it. I would say the best form of clan boss team you would be able to run with him is not necessarily unkillable, maybe just more like a standard clan boss team, because his kit, you know, decrease attack, no benefit on unkillable. Um, Giant Slayer procs definitely good. Poison definitely good, but he eats those poisons as well. So you know, if I was trying to fit him into all zeros clan boss team right now, uh, which is a bat eater, he wouldn't really fit the role. You know, he's got a Draco in here, obviously a great champion, but he wouldn't do anything like the work that a Draco is doing because he's bringing no decrease defense, no weaken. It's poisons he eats himself. So, you know, you don't get that kind of scaling damage over time that you would from someone like a Draco. Not saying he couldn't do the job, he could, but I don't think he'd be as good as some of the regular ones we see. Whereas in a normal team where you're kind of pairing him alongside other other poisoners, other champions, um, and the decrease attack becomes more valuable, I think that he would do more work there. So on to Doom Tower, you know, you think about the bosses that we're fighting on Doom Tower. Um, anyone, any boss like this where you want that decrease attack plus AoE damage, brilliant. I guess we could show that one. Um, Griffin, you want decrease attack on when you can get it. Brilliant. Poison to, to pop as well is kind of nice, albeit poisons don't do as much work as something like a burn. Um, you know, even someone like Agriff, I've scored him low on Agriff. If you're nuking the Spiderlings, which is a pretty viable strat, then he becomes useful. If you're struggling with the Spiderlings or, or can't control them, the AoE hits can be a little bit uh, dodgy. So mo I feel like most of the doom tower bosses he's gonna do some working for you let's throw him into this one here um i guess he replaces the decrease attack albeit this is a protection champion so maybe we take seal out of the mix here we've got an hp burn champion here which complements him he's another decrease attack champion which helps us in this fight a lot i think we do something like this uh oh, i can't run a silver key that's a shame but this is the sort of team I think we're coming to, or maybe he becomes your decrease attack champion. Um, I definitely feel like he can do a lot of work on Doom Tower bosses as well. So I know you've probably already got him by this point, albeit you're getting through normal, so maybe he will help you on hard. But yeah, look, Dark Kale, I think he's one of the best epics in raid. I think he's one of the best, and I think he's so versatile, he can basically run into any team in the game. I don't feel like there's a place that he's weak. So um, there you go, guys. Cool Zero, thank you for lending me the account. Hope you enjoyed the video. I've been Hell Hades. I will see you later.